Hi guys, today I'd like to talk to you about the EV RE320 microphone and how I've modded it. So I picked this microphone up a little while ago and found the lack of proximity effect from EV's variable D um, was really cool. The lack of proximity effect on a cardioid mic was something I hadn't really found before. Yeah, I'd seen demos online, I'm sure we all have, but it was really cool to actually hear that in action. However, I didn't like the sound of the microphone itself. I found the upper mid-range quite edgy and forwards, and it was resulting in quite harsh overall sound. If we look at the response charts, you can start to see why. Even the so-called linear switch still leaves you with an elevated upper mid-range and lower treble. It's not exactly smooth, and the um, kick drum switch does nothing to, <laughs> nothing to help that, really, and also introduces a scoop down here, which I'm not always a fan of. I'd rather do that at the desk. Um, if I feel the kick drum needs it, but I'd rather my mics were just nice and flat. So I set off with REW and did my own measurements. So here's the um, so-called flat setting, and there's the large upper mid lower treble rise that I was talking about, and I'm sure you can imagine that the big peak up at 5k and the elevated region out to 10k-ish certainly resulted in a very harsh and forward sound. Switching to kick drum, as expected, there's the dip, 3 to 400 hertz, and the dip that's between 3 and 4k is smoothed out, so you've got a larger, broader peak at 5k. And it still didn't sound good. So, what to do? I'd been playing around with a crossover simulator for speakers for some time, and figured, hey, microphones are just speakers wired backwards. So. Um, with a bit of thought, I came up with a way of abusing some <laughs> some crossover software in such a way as that it give me useful results for a dynamic microphone. So what we have here is S3 is the original mic. This is with the circuit board from EV disconnected. Um, so you can see the full extent of the um, 5k peak up here really is something. Uh, S1 is providing the impedance curve of the capsule. S2 is giving us the frequency response output, and these two resistors here are the, represent the 10k input impedance of the um, mic preamp I used to measure these things. So the red curve here is the sort of after product once you've, um, once you've installed these components, and what I've done here is a simple notch filter. What this does is start to short out the capsule at a particular frequency, and as you can see, that's the 5k one. I've offset the graphs a little bit so you can sort of see the difference here, but there you go. So the combination of capacitor induct and inductor set the frequency of the notch, and to some extent the Q factor as well, and the resistor sets how deep the notch is. So you can see as you, res as you reduce the resistor value, you're effectively shorting out the capsule more at that frequency, and that can give you quite a large notch actually, but we're not interested in that, we just want something reasonably flat somewhere around there, about the 200 ohm mark, give or take. So, that immediately looks quite a lot better, and I'll show you what happened on when on the measurements in a moment. Some other things you can do here is you can start to short out the capsule with an inductor. Now, it's not particularly useful for this microphone because there's no proximity effect, but other microphones, if you're going to be talking close up to them, can really benefit from that. It's something that my old um, Bayer M67s have, and I find that really useful, actually. If you switch the um, switch the low-frequency cut switch to speech, it literally just puts an inductor across the capsule, shorts out towards the low frequencies, and actually really nicely counter out the proximity effect at close distances. So if we put that in here, you can see um, towards 100 hertz here, the bass is starting to roll off, and you'd expect that, actually, proximity effects tends to rise at a similar sort of rate, that that will probably come out quite linear at close talking distances, which is useful. But you can you can do all sorts of simulations with this, you can pretty much do what you like. All you'll need to do, um, well as you saw in my previous video on how to measure microphones, you'll need to measure the mic for the frequency response that goes into S2, and the impedance curve which goes into S1. Um, measuring impedance is something you can do it the same as you'd do a speaker, it's not a huge deal, there's plenty of tutorials online for that sort of thing. So, on to the results. Um, this is the sort of thing we're expecting here, and if we go across to REW and have a look how it came out, we can we can see this. 
Now, the response overall is clearly a lot more linear than how it started out. So, um, there's a little bit more level towards the lower mid-range and base, I'm not going to complain about that for sure. And further up the range, we've got an overall it's more linear response, and that 5kHz peak has gone. It's replaced with a gentle rise up towards about 9k, and then it starts to gradually roll off after that. I'd say that's a big improvement to the response curve of the microphone. I think the mic sounds much better as a result. I plan on keeping the mic like this, so I'm not going to return it to its factory state, because I honestly think this sounds a lot better. What I'm going to do now is leave you with a couple of clips that I've recorded. This was um, the same take, me playing guitar, which isn't something you necessarily want to hear. But the two mics I've used, one of them was the Bayer Dynamic MC930, which is a good small diaphragm condenser mic, and the other mic I used is the modded RE320. Um, I've put, positioned the microphones as shown in the pictures and description. The first clip you'll hear is the Bayer microphone, and then the EV. Let me know what you think, answer in the comments. Mm -hmm.